Hello, back again. <laughs> I wanted to talk a little bit about um, the um, the images on the tarot cards and how they have thrown a lot of confusion into some of my students. And how I see the same questions being asked about... Um, about this issue with me from different people and so I thought going over this might might be helpful as far as clearing up some some um, some thinking about this and so I thought I, I would just mention uh, go over this with you basically I'm talking about the um, three of swords the eight of swords the nine of swords and the ten of swords and um, these cards seem to be troubling to uh, a lot of people, and if you know them, if you know what what's going on with them, it, it helps a lot. So, and be, so before I before I even go into that, I, I think it'd be good for me to go into a little bit about me, so you know where I'm coming from here. I got involved with the tarot in 1969. That's when I first started. So it's basically it's 50 years ago. Next month is going to be 2019. So, and back then. Um, I was 16, so I hopped on a train. I called up Crocs and Brentanos, which was like Borders and Barnes and Nobles, but there was no Borders and Barnes and Nobles. Then. Crocs and Brentanos was the biggest chain bookstore around. I called. They were downtown Chicago. I, I, I called them up. I said, you got tarot cards? And they said, yeah. I said, well, hold it. I want a deck, if, so just put them at the counter for me. And... Um, I hopped on a train, I went downtown, they were on Wabash, and I walked in, I told him, I'm the guy who called about the tarot cards, and the guy said, uh, he says, oh yeah, and he just reached behind him, on the counter behind him, and he just put them on the counter, he said, here they are, and, um, and that's all there was to it, there wasn't any variety of tarot cards back then, there was just tarot cards, and there was the tarot Marseille, was what was the most easily or circulated deck out at the time. Tarot, that's what you that's what you got. So I, I took them home and basically that's all it was was that you didn't have a choice like you do today. And I, I bring this up because um, I feel in the last so I've been involved with tarot cards like I said for fifty years, but I think in the last fifty years you've seen more history with tarot cards than you have seen in the 500 years previous to the last 50 years combined. There's been more history, more things done with tarot cards in the last 50 years than there was putting together all the rest of their history together. Now you have all these different decks and you have all these different authors and different sources on tarot cards that you, had you never had that before. So when I got involved with it, it was just tarot cards. And um, so you looked at a card like the Three of Swords here, and it was just that. It was just that there was no, <laughs> there was no options to it. And there were pip cards. And um, the Minor Arcana was mostly we just pip cards. There weren't pictures of people doing things or anything artsy on there at all. And, um, and that, have, that was a big difference. But also the, the meanings of the cards have changed too. And this, I bring this stuff up because I, I don't want, I think it's good for people to, to realize you don't want to look at what you're learning as something that's etched in stone over time and it's always going to be that way or it's, this is the only way of seeing the card. I've seen so many changes in 50 years they realize that they're all right 
and there's nothing that's incorrect, it's just what it is. So to show you what I'm talking about, I'm going to give you a, the meaning of the Three of Swords from the instruction book that came with the deck, the Marseille. And basically what it's saying the Three of Swords is, is um, mental strength, victory, and gain. So it's saying, uh, if I read the exact words, it's a struggle upheld by mental strength. So you've upheld something, you've kept something going. I ensuring victory over the physical. Gain by force. So it's, it's a good card here. It's um, mental strength, victory, gain. And um, so it's, it's, um, it's, a, it's a positive card. I go into another book written in the uh, 1970s here called um, Forbidden Images, The Secrets of the Tarot. And if I look at the Three of Swords here, now here they're using the Rider Waite deck. But they're still talking pretty much the same type of thing. They're saying here it um, signifies intellectual uh, pairing of logic and reason, um, sustained uh, levels of in inventions, ideas, theories, solutions. So it's a good card. But then it goes on to explain, however, Waite's sad picture of the pierced heart can show that sometimes this could be tough because of going through emotional emotions with the, with these 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 movements that you're doing. So they had to explain the negative look there of the card, but it talks about ideas, invention, ideas, theories, solutions, intellectual logic, and and um, it just it's a nice card. If I go into another book from the 80s, you achieve the skill of coming out of any crisis as a winner with this card, Three of Swords. This is from The World of the Tarot, The Gypsy Method of Reading the Tarot by Sergius Galloway, and he uses the... Um, Gypsy Tarot, Sanguini, Zagoiner Tarot. I can't even pronounce what this is. This is Europeans. I can't pronounce it. But um, Gypsy Tarot, T S I G A N E, Sagani. But it's a good deck, and um, and that's from the '80s. So things, you know, it, I, I've seen a lot of changes with these cards. In 1970. Weight came out, or U.S. Games came out with the Rider Weight deck again in 1970. It was originally done in 1910. It was lost over time. I don't know if it was ever really that popular back then because obviously the, the tarot cards were considered the Marseille deck. But U.S. Games Systems Incorporated, Stuart Kaplan, founder, um, he came out with the Rider Weight deck again, put it back on the market in 1970, and it took off like crazy. And it's because it has images on all the cards. And here we have The Complete Guide to the Tarot by Eden Gray. It's a great book. And her definition of the Three of Swords is, um, is that's where it gets negative. And it talks about um, mental anguish, quarreling, separation, tears. So it's looking at that image and it's taking it pretty literal. But if you're used to the if you're used to the the Marseille deck, you start to put these and, and you've read tarot cards for a number of years, like I have, you start to melt all these meanings down and you realize that this card is a I, I use the threes as as creativity. I say in my books Three stand for creativity. And the way I teach, that's how I teach. 
So sometimes if you're getting creative could be a, you're getting creative on something that's unpleasant. And sometimes you're getting creative on something that's really uh, a lot of fun. So it, it, it's a wide range of meaning here. And if you're just using the Marseille, if you, if you learned with the Marseille or if you're familiar with the Marseille deck, you can see that this card, you know, it gives you a lot of range about what the card means. Or if you're, if you're stuck on a deck where there's an image on there, if you're familiar, if you're used to a deck like this, you can get locked into a negative feeling about the card. So if you understand the Marseille deck, you look at the Rider Waite deck and say, well, okay, it's three swords. You know, I don't care if it's going through a heart. I know what the three of swords represents or what it means. And yeah, sure, if you, you're breaking up with your boyfriend, uh, you want to get creative about how it's the easiest way to let him down, that's not an easy situation. You don't want to do it. That could be a, that would be, this image here could show that that's you getting creative on something you don't want to do right now, but you got to do it. It could be very hurtful. But there's also wonderful, wonderful things you can get creative about. So that's the difference. You just start to see if you're using the Marseille or if you're familiar with the Marseille deck, you see a wider range of meaning with cards like this. And what I think, what what I think with that, it, what it helps you with is it it, sh it ex expands your range beyond the image on the card. Because you know, if you're familiar with the Marseille, you know that this explicit image on a deck like the Rider Waite is just one of many aspects or one of many images that can be shown to. Um, represent an aspect of creativity. And um, and that's really the way it should be looked at. Or at least I feel that uh, that's the way it should be looked at. So this just helps broaden your range of meaning. If you look at the images, as there's just a snapshot of one image, you know, take the take the um, take the eights. And then we move to the eights, and you look at the eights. Okay, well, to me, eights represent advancement. So you take the word advancement. That's a key word that I use for eights. And think of a picture that would represent advancement. You know, there's all sorts of them. But you can only put one on a card. So, I mean, there's only one that you're going to be able to put on there when you print this deck, and uh, and that's all you got. Or if you're using a Marseille deck or a traditional deck like that, you just got eight swords on there. And um, that can mean anything. So eights are advancement. Here, we, you know, with the, with the eight of swords on the Rider deck, you have uh, an image there that we're talking about advancement, yeah, but we're talking about it in a in a way that's showing a um, a need a advancement being restricted or blocked in some way, and we need to free the bonds up here, and um, how how tight those bonds are that that are shown on that person that that. That varies. Who knows? But advancement is still the issue. But we're just showing one aspect of the word or the meaning of advancement here. Where the Eight of Swords, Marseille, is just Eight Swords. There's all, all types of ideas that you could have for advancement. And um, what happens with what happened, I think, with with the with the writer deck. Uh, by the way, I use the writer deck. I, mean, I, I I read professionally mostly with the with the Marseille, but I teach with the writer because it's such a standard today 
that um, most books are written with the writer in mind. My books are. And um, it's just like a standard of the industry, you know. And and, and most artists that want to create a tarot deck will use the writer deck as a guide on what their images should look like. So most everybody else fell in line with that. They didn't want to use the Marseille because it's just going to draw, you're going to paint eight, eight swords here. Well, you could use the writer and make your own rendition of somebody being bound and blindfolded with swords around them. You know, if you're an artist, you're going to want to do that. So as this deck came out, and people started making decks, they used the writer as a guide. And that even locked meanings into place even more, I think. So it's nice to know at least a background about the Marseille because um, it expands the range of a card like this. You could say, well, that's an... Yeah, that's one aspect of advancement. That's an issue showing advancement is the subject here. Obviously, here it's being restricted, but we're still talking about advancement and what we got to do about it to create advancement. We've got to free something up. Well, that not, might not necessarily have to be the case in the reading. And it's nice to have a, um, that kind of perspective of what the card can mean. And it's easy to do that if you understand the Marseille deck. This way, if you're using a Rider deck or some, something similar to that, you know that that's just one of many images that can be used to represent the meaning of that card. And we got the same thing going on here with the with the nine and the ten of swords. The same way, it's the same thing. We got on the on the right here. You see the Marseille deck. It's just nine swords. Nines to me mean attainment. And on the the writer deck, you have um, this this picture that doesn't look too good. This is obviously a person who's, if you look at it as attainment. Uh, a person aware of a sad truth, a, an awareness that is not very happy, happy, happy about. This person is not very happy about a realization that's painful. Coming to the terms with something, self denial maybe or something. Um, something's not happy here, but it is an attainment. And maybe what Wait was doing here was was looking at it and saying, you know. I have pictures on all of my cards now, and if he's looking at the nines as something close to the word attainment, maybe he's looking at them and thinking, you know, maybe I should put something negative on some of these cards, on one of the suits maybe, so that people understand that something like sometimes attainments are not um, a pleasant thing. They're not always a happy thing. Right away you think attainment, you think something good. Well, in the long run, it's good to attain whatever this person's attaining in this nine of swords. There's a realization it's going to cause a lot of growth or a lot of understanding that needs to be done, coming to terms with something. But it's not, uh, not a very pleasant thing to go through. And the same with the tens. Uh, tens are completion. Most completions you would look at as something very good. Retirement's a completion. Graduation is a completion. And sometimes completions could be a negative thing. But, again, when you only can put one picture on there, you have to show it's only one aspect of completion or one aspect of attainment with the nines. And um, with the traditional Marseille deck, it's just nine swords or ten swords. And you take the word and you can use that in any way you want to. However, it fits with the reading. So there's advantages to understanding the Marseille deck. 
it helps you when you have images like this on the writer deck and other decks that are out there now it helps you from being locked into focusing so much on that image that one aspect that one image of that meaning of whatever that meaning happens to be and the meanings aren't really as important as, as not getting locked into something I mean one source might have a meaning being one thing another source might have a meaning be another thing but what these images can do is lock you in to a specific and that's not good I don't think it's good or the Marseille deck if you know that deck and you keep that in mind as you use other decks it frees that up very well another thing I like to mention with the um, with the Marseille deck as opposed to a deck like the Rider Waite is the symbolism people go deeply into the symbolism of, um, of these cards and if you look here at the uh, here we have the High Priestess and in Marseille it's called the Popus and the Hierophant was called the Pope and um, so we have a lot of symbolism in the writer deck here with the pillars of Solomon or uh, pillars of the temple of Solomon Boaz and Jacob and uh, she's actually sitting in front of the the Holy of Holies which is the back room in the Temple of Solomon all the way in the back there was a veil uh, with pomegranates painted on it covering that room and in the in that room the Holy, Holy of Holies is where they kept the Ark of the Covenant and um, I guess that had the secrets of God in there or whatever. But that's why there's pomegranates on this um, veil in the back. And I guess she's supposed to be sitting there in front of that room. And she has the crescent moon at her, bot at her feet. And um, there's a lot of symbolism here. But if you look at the Marseille deck, it's, um, it's a lady pope is what it really is. And... Um, so if people look at the Rider Waite deck, they, they might think that this has always been called the High Priestess, and it's always looked something like this. Well, that's not really the case. So I bring this up because images are not they're not locked into place for always have been the same that they haven't, and they can change. And here I have the, the Magician card the same way. Wait used uh, lilies and roses in a, a few of his cards to represent passion and innocence. So you see him in the foreground here. It's a lush garden area he's in. And he's uh, pointing to the earth and he's pointing to the sky. He's got a, the infinity sign above his head. He's got the snake belt with the, the snake biting its own tail. Another sign of infinity, I believe. So there's a lot of symbolism in here. Well, if you look at the Marseille deck, it's just more like a street um, performer and uh, doing tricks. Matter of fact, I have there, there are some decks where he's called the trickster. Some he's called the magician. Some he's called the trickster. Here he's called the juggler. And um, doesn't have any of that in there. So these images with all this symbolism in them were not always the case so it's, it's just good to keep in mind it wasn't always there it's nothing again that's etched in stone and um, it's just a way of looking at the card and way put symbolism in these cards for his own reasons um, why ever he did that for he did it for but um, if you go too deep into the symbolism, then you're limiting yourself to just that deck. If I go to another deck, 
even if there's illustrations on all the cards, maybe that particular artist didn't use all the symbolism that the writer weight has in it. Maybe they used other symbolism. You don't, you know, it's just there's a lot of variables there. So these are just things that I th I'd like to point out. I like to point out because I think they're they help you with your your scope of understanding these cards. That they have changed a lot, at least uh, since I've been using them. I've seen a lot of changes with them. And again, I think there's been the last fifty years has seen more changes with the tarot than ever before. So I've been fortunate enough to see all these changes and I just wanted to share them with you. So I think getting back to basics, the um, understanding of the Marseille deck, which is probably the first deck that was ever used for divination. Before that they were just probably used for game playing. But getting back to the basics could help with your understanding of the cards. And um, at the bottom of the screen here, you'll see a link to, my, in, in the description, you'll see a link to my website, petishi.com. I'm going to put a second link down there too, something you might get a kick out of. It's a link to a trailer of a movie that I remember seeing, I think in 65 or 64. <laughs> I was in sixth grade or so, I think. Me and my buddies took a bus downtown and went to the show one day to see this. It's called Dr. Terror's House of Horrors. And Peter Cushing, Donald, Suther Donald Sutherland's in it. They don't even show his name in the credits, I don't think. He's a young guy. And... Um, Christopher Lee, there's some old actors in there, and P Peter Cushing's a tarot reader, and it's a horror flick, so, um, and he reads everybody's cards, and, and he, he sh predicts all their horrible deaths that they're going to have, <laughs> but I remember seeing that, I think it was in sixth grade, I remember seeing that movie thinking, oh, I want to be a card reader. And, um, hell, I ended up being a card reader. But I don't think it had anything to do with the movie. I just think it's just, it just ended up being a coincidence. But uh, I, want, I saw a lot of cowboy movies, too. I always wanted to be a cowboy. I was never a cowboy. So I, I think the reason I became a card reader had nothing to do with this movie. But it, it's funny to see the um, that old clip. And, um, and they used the tale of Marseille then because, in that movie, because... That's all they had. So anyway, have a good day. I hope you like this, and, um, and we'll talk soon.